It's like any redesign, you spend more time in the beginning as your, that summer before we launched the course, yes, we put in a bunch of hours, as I think you do anytime you have a new prep, because you're thinking through readings or you're thinking, you know, you do. In a traditional first year writing course on this campus and in English 130, um, the cap has changed over time. When I started it was about 22 and now it's 30 students. So you'd have 30 students in a classroom with the instructor and the assignment sequence would really ranges. They'd, um, but they're going to do a ton of writing, annotations, summary work, complicated academic reading, usually culminating in some kind of a research project. That part, the actual curriculum part has stayed pretty much the same. I'd say what's changed, um, size obviously, we now have triple the number of students, so 90 instead of 30. And we've mediated that by embedding peer mentors who are a part of the course. Each one of the peer mentors is assigned 10 students, so they're responsible for this small team of students. And then I've done a ton with technology as a way, particularly social media, as a way to create other ways for students to participate in that class besides just talking in class. Particularly for freshmen, speaking up in a class of 90 can be very intimidating. So I needed to think about ways that they could still have a voice in that space that may not necessarily be through traditional talk in the class. So it might be through a post on Twitter. It might be through a post on the discussion board in Vista. It might be a summary on a wiki space. It might be on the Ning. But there's going to be a variety of ways that they can participate. So the way technology has functioned for us, and I, I think from what they've said it's, it's successful, is the learning management system, whatever it is, functions as the hub. Students can go there, in this case Vista, and find the syllabus and the assignments, announcements, a footer that tells them what's coming up, what they should have completed this week, and then links to our other the other kinds of sites that we're using. In this, this semester, for example, I'm using Digo as a way to share uh, resources and research that they found. They're on Twitter um, and we're using Google Docs and Google Sites a lot. So all the links to those things sit on Vista so they only have to go to one place and then they can get to these other spaces. It has, it has done a lot in terms of organizing them so they're able to kind of keep track. Their grades are there. You know, they all their discussion board stuff is hosted for them there. Um, but, but then using that in combination with these other sites um, has also made it so you get to know the students. So technology for us has been a huge part of building community uh, through them participating in these different ways. The traditional English 130 class that I might have taught previously, everything's just handed in, right? Hard copy to the teacher, hard copy to the teacher, hard copy to the teacher. Well now, you've got to remember that Friday by 4 you're posting a response to reading on the discussion board and you're uploading an article to Digo by Monday and you're giving a draft of your essay to appear on Google Docs and, to your, and sharing that with your mentor. I mean, you've got to keep track of all the different places that writing is living. I mean, it really changes the ecology of writing, and we like that. We like that the writing is moving. The turnaround time with the mentors is really fast, but I'm sure from the student's perspective, especially in the beginning, and I just know that there's going to be some learning curve that's steep for about four weeks, where they're trying to keep track with, and it's very low stakes in the beginning. We're not dinging them for trying to figure it out. Um, but we're reminding them, hey, you know, and once they, once they understand the purpose of those different sites, for example, the moment everybody uploads an article to Digo and summarizes it and tags it with whatever the research is that they're interested in, and they see now, oh my gosh, I have 90 articles that I could draw from that are all related to the same thing I'm researching, then they get Digo. You know, but the first, like, what, you're what? We're, you're making us what? Um, once they understand that on the discussion board, it's just in their small group and they're going to get some really good feedback. I mean, it really, they have to do it in order to understand. So compared to their friends who are in traditional 130s who may not, who are just coming to class, getting the work done in class, turning in a paper draft, and leaving, this feels, I think, in the beginning a little more confusing. Now, survey data by the end, they say things like, I became really responsible, I learned a ton about my writing, here's specific things I learned about it. And, and there's an energy in the room that can't be replaced with 90 bodies when they're all engaged in doing some kind of research. I mean, there really is this energy that you can't duplicate in a smaller class, and it's one of the things that I like about the bigger class.